Great success. G'day legends, today we are back on the 12 foot jet punt build. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, I'll put a card up in the corner here, but I bought this jet punt for $300 off Marketplace. Already had a jet drive in it, but it had no engine. So I had this one here laying around. This is 155 horsepower Sea-Doo engine out of a jet ski, obviously. I bought five jet skis for $1,500. I got three of these 130 horsepower ones. This one is the one that's already going. There's separate videos on that if you wanna check that out. And I bought a 155, which is what the engine come out of, but it was missing most of the other stuff off it. So we're just using that as a part ski. And I've got another Bombardier two-stroke one, which will be coming up in uh, a separate video series after I'm done with these. Anyway, where we left off last video, Bam gave me a hand and we got all the engine mounted up. And I also got the drive shaft for that coupling machine that'll go on the back there to drive the jet drive. And this video, we're gonna be on to the other ancillary gear to see if this thing actually runs because I've, I've never seen it running. So we have everything that come out of the other ski. I stripped them. I've got buckets full of parts down here. I've got triggers and sensors and I've got two dashes, even though they're sun faded. Hopefully it still runs with it. I've got hoses and clamps and all sorts of other stuff. I've got about two or three of these exhausts. Got one over in there I'm trial fitting at the moment. Got an air box. Fuel wise, I'm not gonna use the jet ski tank because the fuel pump in those ones are cactus anyway from sitting around. So I've got a portable boat tank and just a small EFI pump. Hopefully just run that in line, wire that up, put a battery up here somewhere, and Bob's your uncle. See, this weekend I'm gonna try and get all this stuff fitted up and try and get it running. So yeah, let's get into it. The exhaust is actually really close to fitting that um, sort of, that round bit, I can't point because I'm holding it, but that round bit where my thumb is, goes up into there and it almost, almost is lining up. So, I don't really want to cut and shut this, but I will if I had to, because I've got um, Ali TIG welders and everything there. I've got a double pulse MIG, and I've also got a ACDC TIG, so that's not a big issue. I could cut and shut it and bring this in a bit, but ideally, if I can just trim this down slightly so it gets further up inside that rubber hose, and maybe trim that off a little bit so I can get it in there, hopefully it'll squeeze in and just fit. So, I'm gonna do some choppy choppy on here, a bit of measuring, so yeah, let's see if it'll fit or see whether I've got to probably spend a couple hours modifying it. Going by my redneck calculations, that's roughly where that hose was coming up to at the corner there. So if I can push it all the way up to the edge, that's about another 25 mil. So we're gonna take 20 off and start with that. Hopefully that's enough. Righto, quick test fit. I think I'll have to put that in there first. Yep, if we go down farther. Oh, we're so close. No, nah, not quite. Not quite close enough. I wonder if we can modify this more. Really, I should be able to go until that is right up there and then the rubber just covers that, so. The amount that I leave on here really only needs to be as wide as that hose clamp. So we're gonna take another, I don't know, 10 or 15 mil off and see how that looks. Righto, attempt two. Ooh, very close. It just dawned on me that maybe I could do what people do when they put engines or transmissions into cars that aren't meant to fit them and they just like flog and panel beat the firewall. Maybe I can uh, dent this in a bit. I do have three of these exhausts, so if I kill this one, it doesn't really matter. We'll give it a bit of a bash and see if that makes a difference. What about now? Right, that pretty much fits. It's just touching on that corner. I can cut that off or take a bit off it and I can cut the heads off these bolts. So I reckon that'll be fine. Right, after about an hour of playing around, I think I've got it ready for a test fire. This is pretty redneck even by my standards. We've got the boat tank hooked into the EFI pump, the EFI pump running up to the fuel rail. So if we pump some pressure, pump that up to prime the EFI pump. And then over this side, we have just an AGM battery I had laying around. We've got the starter wired up and we have got uh, this little missile switch to power the fuel pump. So if I hit this, there we go. We have fuel pressure. Can't see any leaks. Uh, we currently have no exhaust and no intake, but that doesn't really matter. And then up the front here, this is all harnessed out of the jet ski. I think that goes to the fuel pump, which I don't need because I've got that. So hopefully there's no sort of um, interlock or anything looking for the pump. I've got a dash hooked up. Not sure if this is the right one. I do have another one over there. They're both cooked, but hopefully it's enough to get it to fire just in case there is something in that that is an immobilizer. And then up here we have the 
the buttons and the two lever controls for the throttle and the brake reverse hooked up. I should have a spring on that because if that starts it might just rev its guts out. Anyway, stay tuned. And then we have the um, ignition kill switch fob. I'm not sure if this was the one out of this ski. I'm not sure if that's the key. Actually, I'm pretty sure that's the key out of the ski for this one. But I'm not sure which ski they come out of. So, anyway, I'm not even sure this will kick. But, uh, yeah, I think it is good to go. We're going to try and see if it'll crank over. Righto, will it crank? Oh, I don't think so. I don't think this is going to crank. One of these should be the... No. I wonder if I can just bridge out the starter. Nah, nothing's happening and for some reason I can't even bridge the starter. So I'm going to do some fault finding and we'll be back in a sec. Right, after a bit of fault finding, I've found that the AGM battery does not have enough guts to drive the starter motor. It'll drive the fuel pump. But yeah, obviously it is on the way out because I ran jumper lead straight from the ute to the starter, cranks over fine. So I'm going to dig around and see if I've got another battery somewhere. I thought I might as well chuck it on the load tester. It's up there at 12 volts. But if you wind this up, Ready, steady, boo. Pulling down and pulling no amps. She, she dead. I've got this 100 amp hour Kings one laying around. Wonder if it's any better. I might test it first before I worry about it. Uh, no. Also dead. It's getting hard to find good batteries laying around. A battery sponsor would be pretty handy. I finally gave up trying to find other batteries, so I just pulled the good brand new battery out of the other ski, which is probably what I should have done in the first place. So yeah, now it's all rigged back up off this proper size jet ski battery, and we're gonna give it another test fire. So fingers crossed it actually does something. Right, one of these buttons should be the on button, the on start button. So, oh, there we go, it's alive. Can't see nothing on the screen. Okay, that's working like a jet ski should. Will it crank? The throttle blade opened a little bit. Ah, timed out. No. Oh, look at that. The throttle's working. Wow. That was the throttle blade. Whoop, throttle, throttle, throttle. So that's throttle closed. So that's good. I might put the plugs and coils back in just in case it's looking for the coils. I don't know. I don't know if that'll make any difference, but we'll give it another try. Nah. Oh no, the key doesn't make a difference. Okay, that must be the right key. I might try the other dash if it fits. Righto, the other dash. No. There we go. No. That doesn't seem to make a difference. I popped all the fuses and checked them and it actually looks like this little 30 amp is popped. So I put a fresh one in, let's see if that makes any difference. Still won't start and I've got no idea. There is other plugs like the stuff that went to the fuel pump, which are not plugged in. And some down the back that are also not plugged in, which I think is to do with the IBR. Down the back here. Maybe it needs to see one of them before it'll crank. So. I might actually go look at a wiring diagram or look on a forum or something like that and see if I can get some pointers of someone else that's put this in a jet boat because it's probably going to save me hours. So uh, yeah, we'll be back after I do some reading. So to break for half an hour, come out reinvigorated, decided to have another crack. I ended up getting on the phone to Cody and Bam, take advantage of the fact that I'm mates with two Will It Run experts and they reckon to come out and give it a spray with brake clean. I didn't think that was going to work because I thought it was still looking for fuel pump. See, I came in and gave it a spray with brake clean. I'll throw in the vertical video here that I sent in the group chat. It uh, sort of scared me because I didn't think it was going to fire up. I'll hit that and wake the f up. Like that. Put the fuel pump. No, we don't need the fuel pump on. I'll hit this and brake clean. Sheesh! That actually 
actually did work. Okay. Bam, you were right. I was wrong. I was sure that wasn't going to work. Righto. See, that means the ignition's working, so it's just the fuel not firing. So I asked ChatGPT, and it reckons that it needs to see the fuel pump. So then I remembered that I do have the old fuel pump assembly from the other jet ski, because I had to put a new one in that. So when Doug's out of the trailer, plug that in. And when I hit the ignition button that, you know, does the, the wake up ready to start, it is getting 12 volt down to where the fuel pump should be. So pretty much this is getting more redneck by the minute. I've just connected those two wires to the feed to the little EFI pump that I had off the battery. So now we're gonna test it out and see if anything happens. Pretty much I wanna see if the fuel pump will prime. Yeah. Oh, it does. It does, it does, it does. Still won't crank. I just remembered I did try to bridge out the pins on the fuel pump before I went and got the actual fuel assembly. And when I did that, it popped another 30 amp fuse. So I just put another spare in. Hopefully it doesn't pop straight away. Righto, let's try again. doesn't want to crank. It does prime though. Hmm. It's got to be something else, like maybe it's the key. Maybe that's not the ignition for this one. Right, it still won't crank, so I think it's going to be this switch is my next guess. But the boys have got a suggestion, maybe I'll just try and bridge out the starter, see if it'll bypass that and see if it will run. So I'll sit you guys over there. Okay, fire that up, fuel pump. Great success. If you're ever gonna test fire an engine though, make sure you have an off button. I had nowhere to turn that off. So in a mad panic, I got the 10 mil and took that off the battery. Yeah. Right, oh, so it's a goer. So all I need now is to figure out bridging out that um, safety switch. Oh, and the engine. Uh, a bit of oil on there. Yeah, it's definitely got oil because it's now all coming out the back. Actually, can you grab one of them sump plugs? Put this in, quick, 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 go, go, go. Put that in. Some plugs are to keep the oil in the boat, right? Not uh, the water out. Oh, it's coming out both sides. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Put the oil plugs in. Yeet, yeet, yeet. Success. Not my nails. <laughs> oh no. It's still leaking. I probably should have taken that drive shaft out before I ran it. Oh. We're pretty much out of time this weekend, but in the next episode we will get that drive shaft in, figure out what we're going to do with the exhaust. I still don't know if I want to straight pipe it over the back or actually put the exhaust on. Maybe I'll do both. We'll get everything bolted in and we'll keep working up the front. Hopefully by then I'll have the bits here to build a side console and I'll have the steering cables, helm, wheel, maybe some seats. So yeah, that's probably what's coming up next. So hit that subscribe button if you want to follow along. We've also got more stuff on the D-Max and more stuff with all the other jet skis. Anyway, I'm going to go crack a beer. See you in the next one.